often Christians make the mistake of trying to measure success by their own yardstick. They like to take some provable means and say, I did this, so this happened, that means this was a success. One of the things that you learn quickly in dealing with God on a one-to-one -one basis is the reality that he doesn't see things the way we do. We measure success based upon lots of different varieties of parameters, meaning that we look at something and we say, that man is a success because he's got money, or he's got wealth, or he seems to have a house, a car, uh, two cars, two houses, a variety of different factors we measure a person's success by. But God doesn't look at it that way. God looks on the heart while man looks on the outward things. And because he looks on the heart, he measures success by his own standard and not our own. As a matter of fact, most of the time, we have no clue what God is doing. 90% of the time, we don't even understand how God works because the Bible, which gives us the best understanding of God that we can possibly have except for a personal dialogue with him and talking to him face to face and one on one, the Bible tells us that as high as the heavens are above the earth, so too are his thoughts above our thoughts and his ways above our ways. That we don't even have the capacity within our brain to understand completely or thoroughly what God is doing. As a matter of fact, he's so beyond us that he exists in a different dimension than ours. He's greater than our dimension. So sometimes when we measure success or failure, we mistake the reality of God in it. Because if you're not using God as your yardstick and his word as your ruler, then you're failing in understanding how he views the circumstances of your life. You may think of yourself as a failure. God may think of you as a success. So don't always go by what you think you are. Go by what he tells you you are. Go by his word and not your own understanding. Go by what he says and not what you think. Work and prayer. Work and prayer represent two forces that will ensure your success. Your work and my work. For prayer, believing prayer is based on the certainty that I am working for you, with you, and in you. Go forward gladly and unafraid. I am with you. With men, your task may be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. In prayer, one of the greatest failures people have is to think that God doesn't answer it. They measure their success in prayer by what they think God has to do in order to fulfill it. I personally have told people on a regular basis, God answers all my prayers. He hears all my prayers. He answers all my prayers. Now that sounds belligerent to some, but you see, I choose to ask God how to pray, what to pray, when to pray, where to pray, and what to do with those prayers. That as I lift them up to him, should I do this? I don't just automatically pray because someone says, hey, I got a prayer request. I go, well, that's nice. <laughs> go pray. I mean, you have just as much access as I do. I mean, come on, let's be real. But some people need that extra assurance of faith, so they go to someone else and ask them to pray for them. Jesus didn't say that I will, he did say that I will pray the Father, but and he would you know, give to you another comforter. But he also said, you have no need that I pray for you, but your father desires to know you even as, I, as he knows me and I know him. That is your ultimate goal, is not to have people pray for you, but to go to God personally and intercede on your behalf that you may also ask and receive on others' behalf that which your request has been made known unto God. So if you think that you're not getting an answer, I think you're mistaking the results of your request. Because sometimes prayer isn't only about requests or about answers. Sometimes it's conversation. And sometimes it's a matter of petition and intercession and all these other things that, you know, all these wonderful men of God have through the centuries given us these spiritual terms of intercession and uh, all these words that you know, if you're in theological means, the realities of them. But they don't answer the 
heart's cry of the reality of a person who wants to know God. Because you don't need the theological term in order to understand if God hears you or not, or if God answers you or not. You need to see, feel, hear, touch, and know that God is alive. So don't limit how God may come to you, and you may see that in all ways your prayers are heard. Your success is assured if you begin to realize, or better word instead of realize, which sometimes people use a kind of a new age nuance to say, I'm going to visualize and realize my success, and they get into this salesmanship and brainsmanship of trying to make themselves the power of positive thinking, and you get all these these salesman-like attitude people that want to keep you in a positive way, you know, and to up your personality, you know, so that you can be the best you that you could be, you know, and they're, they're motivational speakers. We got to motivate you. How about God says, you don't need any motivation. You need realization. All you need to do is to recognize me. The realization of what we need is God to reveal himself. That is the greatest motivation in the world. When you have seen God, you will be motivated beyond your belief. When you have heard God, you will recognize his voice and you will be sharpened to a fine-tuned instrument to be able to do exactly what he wants you to do. When you have known God, you are the most motivated person in the world. So don't get caught up in the motivational hype that right now with your power drinks and your caffeines and your sugars and guianas and all the other stuff that you need to wind yourself up with. Rather, allow for the Holy Spirit of God in peace to come to you, in love to fill you, in joy to motivate you. Because if you're motivated by peace, love, and joy, you're not going to run over somebody in your joyful exuberance. You're not going to stomp on somebody in your loving expression. You're not going to devastate someone with your peace that passes all understanding because you have a confidence that can stand the trials and tribulations of this world, but rather you're going to inspire someone because inspiration is the greatest motivation of all. And motivational speakers don't inspire you. They conspire in you to be hyper about what you're doing. Inspired is coming from the Holy Spirit because he infills you with his spirit and God causes you to go out of yourself to his realm and take from his kingdom the inspiration or the, the realization of himself from heaven to earth and causes the kingdom of God to be birthed in you in a born again type experience or as the word also means besides born again, born from above. So you could have that seed, so to speak, that spirit from above come inside you and birth an inspiration that will cause you to go out into the world and succeed in ways you never thought of success. Because as God's ways are not our ways, so too his directions are not our directions. He may choose for you to do something you never thought of doing, but the end result is you succeeded in obeying what he wanted you to do. So don't measure your success by what you think. Measure your success by what God says.